In this video, I'm going to modify an STL file using OpenSCAD. I 3D printed this solder paste dispenser that has a hole in the top where you need to melt in a threaded heat set insert. The 3D model had a hole for a larger diameter insert than the ones that I have on hand. Let's get into how I resize the hole using OpenSCAD. The first thing we need to do is pull the STL file for the 3D model into OpenSCAD. This is super easy to do using the import statement and providing the path to the STL file. In this case, the STL file is in the same folder as my SCAD file, so we only need to specify the file name for the STL. After hitting save, the preview updates to show the model that we imported. I'll adjust the view so we can clearly see the hole that we want to modify. Okay, that looks good. To resize the hole, I'm going to fill it by placing a shape on top of it, and I'll cut a new hole with a smaller diameter. I'm creating a cylinder to plug the hole, and I'm just guessing the dimensions to start with. Once we get it in place, we can tweak the size to fit better. I'm using the handy hash symbol to highlight the cylinder so that I can see things better. Let's rotate the cylinder so it's in the correct orientation in relation to the hole. The rotate function takes x, y, and z parameters. Looking at the key in the bottom left of the preview, I can see that I want to rotate the cylinder around the y axis. We don't need to do anything for the x and z, so we can set those to zero. Now let's move the cylinder into place using the translate function, which also uses x, y, and z parameters. Let's start with the y axis so we can move the cylinder to the left. Okay, six isn't enough, let's try eight. Nice, that looks good. Now let's move the cylinder up by setting a value for the z axis. Nope, a little more. Okay, cool, six looks good. Okay, now let's adjust the x axis to set the correct depth within the model that we imported. This is a combination of tweaking the position and the height of the cylinder to get it flush on either side of the hole. If you zoom in, you will either see a small lip hanging over or it being sunken down too much. When you get it right, the cylinder looks a little splotchy around the edges because the preview is trying to render it in the same space as the model being modified. Okay, that looks good. Let's remove the hash symbol and see how it looks. Nice, we have a solid shape now. Let's create another cylinder that we will use to cut the new hole. For the height, I just want this to be a little longer than the material we are cutting through. I want the diameter to be explicitly 5.5, which is the necessary hole size for the heat set inserts that I will be using. Again, we will use the same hash symbol to highlight the cylinder. Let's also rotate it in the same way as before. We can translate the cylinder to the same Y and Z positions as the cylinder that we used to fill the hole. We don't care so much about the X position because it doesn't need to precisely match the width of the material. It just needs to poke through both sides to create the hole. Now we can use the difference function to instruct OpenSCAD to subtract the cylinder from the one that we used to plug the hole. The difference function treats the first object that it sees as the primary object, and then any objects defined below it will be subtracted from the primary one. The last thing to do is to set the special fn value to something like 100. This tells OpenSCAD to create more fragments and smooth out the cylinders so that we get a nice round hole. I've already 3D printed the modified model in PETG. I'll swap out my soldering iron tip for this awesome one that's designed for heat set inserts. It has nice square edges and isn't tapered like a regular soldering tip. This allows it to make good contact for heat transfer and won't get stuck like a regular tip can. I'll put links in the description below for the iron tips and heat set inserts that I use. I like to size the holes so that the end of the heat set insert can be hand pressed into the plastic and held in place with friction. Now I can heat up my iron and apply gentle but steady pressure until the insert starts sinking into the plastic. Oh man, that's so satisfying. I love the finished look of these things. It's miles better than putting screws directly in plastic. Alright, well that's it. Catch you in the next one.